right, welcome to Agency Power Hour number nine. I'm Ed Hopkins. With me, as always, Keith Gaetan, John Passamano, and Lena Sicatelli. Say hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. So, it's, how, how's your week been so far? <laughs> uh, it's been nuts for me. I've been, uh, I got a lot of things cooking, uh, getting texture ready uh, to get going. I got uh, the app uh, currently in beta. Hopefully, I can put that in front of you guys, hopefully next week. And then in Facebook group, you guys probably seen the post that I made. If not, I will refresh your memory. So let me get out of this here. And which I can see your screen and I can hear you, by the way. Well, isn't that fantastic? <laughs> Me too. Looking good. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm, I'm having a, a good afternoon at least. <laughs> All right, so you guys are gonna go to this link. And you guys are going to vote on an app set. You can see people from Facebook have already started voting. I don't care if you guys try to vote twice, but it detects IP addresses. So if you guys are going to do it, you guys are going to have to probably turn off your Wi-Fi on your phone and make a secondary vote. But I'm going to send the link again into the chat box that you guys are going to visit. And there's also a short URL as well that will help you guys just type it in. So I'm going to open this up for you guys. Uh, please vote for your favorite app icon set for the community app. Go to this link right here and vote now. Winner will be decided by you at the end of the webinar. Um, here's the link again. That is a lowercase b, lowercase x, the number one, and the uppercase letter u. If you guys are typing in, I'll leave that on the screen for just a minute here. And then uh, once we get these going, um, as far as a winner, that moves us a little bit further with our app, too, because now we can brand it with colors and what have you. We have decided on uh, multiple color scheme. This has nothing to do with LGBTQ, Elemental P. This is just a general color scheme that our graphics artists came up with for a community app. So there's no intention behind it. It's just straight up what you see is what you get. Um, let's see here. I'll leave this up for one more second. This is the link you guys are gonna go to. That'll take you to this link here where you guys can vote. And you guys can keep referring to this page because it'll automatically update. You'll see the number of votes. So I actually just changed my vote, but my original vote wants to go down here. So you'll see here, I changed my vote. And it'll come back down here and take away from the one that I had up here. So you guys, anytime during this call, after you've had a little bit of time to look and scope each one of these out, then you can change your vote if you want. But essentially, uh, we're going with the um, just a general square as an icon. We're going to be adding animations like on load. It's probably going to spin, or it's probably going to make some uh, little fireworks around it. We'll we'll do something cool for the app. Um, but these icons will appear throughout the app, including the splash page. When there is a push notification, the little icon will appear here. I don't know if you guys can see my my cursor moving here. Yeah. Um, also inside the app stores, it'll be reflected as such too. We might decide on changing some of the background colors. Let's white to a different color, but generally what you see is what is going to happen and what you're going to get. I voted for app set nine. App set nine. So you like the little, uh, the triangles that look like dudes. Yeah. Here yeah. You go. I like, uh, I like symmetry. I like, um, the geog the, um, geo symbols. What's the word? I'm, I'm thinking of the wrong Cause word. It's because you've been indoctrinated by the uh, Illuminati, so you like it. The you geometry know. of it, I just like it. I think it looks <laughs> good. It's clean. I think it'll look clean and nice on an iPhone or an Android. That's all. Keith has been fully indoctrinated into the Illuminati with his. <laughs> <laughs> correct. That is correct. <laughs> this is almost like a Rorschach personality test, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see all your IP, so I know exactly what you guys are thinking before you think it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, you guys have been uh, kicking ass in the uh, Facebook group for the Engage Snap features uh, CSV that you guys all put together. I I log in and I start seeing new things pop. I'm like, man, how does this stuff work? So I have to go in there and play with it a little bit. And I I want to go over a few. One one of them is the uh, the coupon modal widgets. So at first I thought this was something that actually appeared on the actual 
uh, coupon itself. But what it turns out to be, it's a third party um, uh, script that you put on any website. So what I'm going to do is uh, you're going to go to coupon modal widgets. You can create a new widgets, but I'm going to go to one that's already made. You're going to create your widget name. This is just for your reference. Uh, the, the widget type, where there's going to be a link, an image, or button. Whatever you choose here, that's what's going to determine um, the widget code at the very bottom that you're going to embed into a web page. Uh, if it asks you for an image, you're going to put the image here, just search your computer, and then uh, let it upload. Next, assign it to a coupon. So what I did is I just signed it to one of the templated ones that I made uh, with the golf template. And you have a couple options here. Um, if you can have that automatically pop up on the page as soon as the page loads. And with this, I gave me an idea to have a delayed uh, pop-up as well. So I'm going to have my program add delayed pop-up so I can wait 10, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, up to a minute. I'll have a bunch of little uh, selections up here, so look out for that. So you guys did a great job in specking this out. Just forgot some of the cool little uh, integral parts that would make it even cooler. Hey, um, I have a question, Ed. Sure. I, I've noticed on a couple websites that I've gone to lately that the minute I send my cursor up to the X to close it, a pop-up comes up and says, hey, one last chance for blah, 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 or something. Like it knows that I'm about to close the window. Right. So we that's another great idea. We can make it so it'll work on exit as well. So okay. I have a checkbox for exit as well. What it does, those sites that do that, as soon as you leave, this is considered the body of the document here. Yeah. In a more technical term. When it detects a mouse leave here, like you want to change the URL, that's when it'll pop up. Because that, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. So if we could add that, that's pretty spectacular. It gives them one last chance to say, wait, before you go, here's another offer. Exactly. So I'll make note of those things to add tonight. Uh, should be pretty easy for him to do. Um, so then you can decide on the modal content that goes, and I'll show you that here, here in a second where that applies for you expert uh, CSS uh, coders are out there. You guys can use your own custom CSS. Do what you see fit there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to grab the widget code. So this is one that's been spit out for me. Uh, keep in mind, on all of our widgets, we always include some jQuery code. In most cases, it's not going to be required because it's already included with your WordPress or your Bootstrap theme. It already has jQuery, so you would only need this part of the actual code. But since I'm using an old-fashioned site that I made back in 1999 <laughs> that I'm going to show you, and it'll still work, uh, let me bring that up here and bring in my editor. So I just copied all that code, and let me put this into code view. Now you see the closing body tag here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it right there, make sure it's all there. So this is the code I just pasted. That's from that page. I click on save. And I'm just going to cancel these out. All right, so now that's done. I'm going to go to my local lead machines page. I'm going to refresh it, and hopefully we get a pop-up here. There it is. There's my modal, and there's my coupon. So I've made the Ooh. coupon pop up right on my page. Dude, that's um, awesome. This is where the coupon uh, information, the actual content comes from, is this stuff right here. So if you want to center it, you can do that. If you want to add a picture, you can do that as well. Uh, I do believe it is mobile ready, so let me put it in mobile mode. The website's probably not going to look that great, but I'm sure that the modal will. And let me fresh it. Do, 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 do. It's loading, loading. Loading, loading, loading. Keep the web page loading. Oh, actually, I know what it is. This is an old site that it uses Flash right here, and the mobile browser does not know what to do with it. Let me try it one more time. Yes, it's the Flash phone. But what it would do is it would pop up just like it would um, on the actual website itself. So. Well, I believe and trust you. I tried to show you something cool, but it wouldn't work. So my bad. All right, so that's how you get it to do on a pop-up. So let's say let's not do a pop-up. Let's do a call to action, which is this little uh, image here. 
So you're going to unselect um, auto pop up on page ready. Uh, leave your content, save widget. So now I'm going to take this code, copy it, and let's place it in a certain part of my website here. I'm going to split this up, and you'll see that I have a little sidebar here. Let's plug this guy in right here. And let's see if I can find my little cursor. Put it right there. Paste. And let's see if that works. Keep in mind, I'm putting this on a very antiquated site, so we never know what's going to happen. So there's our modal. Let me refresh this, turn off the debugger, and there's our take, act, take action page. Now keep in mind, um, always try to keep your image so it'll fit wherever you're putting it because it's going to put it in the real size that you uploaded here um, to right here. So you see it worked here, and now I click on it, and it brings up the modal. So That's if you awesome. wanted to, you, you really could have two instances of this, so I would recommend just making two different codes and placing it on the site. So let me uh, make sure I just get rid of all that stuff. Uh, go back to the original form. Click on save. Make sure I restore the site before I leave it. And we're good. So that's how the little tool works here for the coupon widget. Um, we will be adding those little additional uh, in cool little features that we've talked about um, tonight. So you should probably see this change. Next is under manage coupons. Let's take a look at the voting here. App, ooh, app set five is taking a, a huge lead here, followed by app set 10. So anytime you guys can change your vote, I'll put that link inside of the chat box again. For those of you that joined a little late, you guys are going to vote for the app icon set, which we will run with when we finish up our app. And that's going to determine a lot of the, the, the look and feel uh, inside of the app, as well as like the flat, the splash page, the app store pages, and as well as the push notifications. So let me go back here now. So another thing that popped up, I think it was either last night or the night before, is notification settings. So if you're using a coupon as a lead notification tool where someone's actually going to fill out the form to get, for example, a discount on HVAC services or whatever, let's say you're using it in combination with the pop-up here. Now you're using this as a lead form. You now can get notified of when somebody completes the form. Now keep in mind in your coupon settings, you do have to have it set up to where you're actually collecting uh, information uh, on the if right here enter personal data because that's going to be critical to be able to notify of who's who um, it's just not going to notify if somebody just hey somebody just claimed a coupon you're not going to know who it is so that's how you use the notification settings you're going to you have options to notify via phone via text message of all the lead information here's all the tokens that you can use make sure um, even though we give you a good little example to start with here it is kind of long and it can exceed 160 characters, so you might want to trim the fat a little bit to make sure that that SMS gets delivered to you because if it exceeds 160 characters, um, you'll never get notified of your lead. Uh, as a backup, or this could be your main notification, is get notified via email. Put in the addresses separated by comma that you want to get notified, so yes, you can notify more than one person via email. Um, enter the subject and also the email body these are the tags that you can use and this is the actual body of the actual email that is sent to you and when you're done click on save and now you've created a lead generation form that is essentially fired once somebody completes that form to be able to use your coupon like that keith i love it it's so sweet another great idea from one of our members um, our, our programmer is going to uh, stay on the CSV for most of the week along with working on the app. So any cool features that you guys can think of, now's the time to get it into your Facebook CSV. If you don't see any work and then one of the tasks that you've put inside of the CSV, 
don't panic. Um, basically, we're going with what we can fit in and the time frame that we can fit it into. So I'm letting him decide. I'm not putting any uh, importance on it. If you remember on previous calls, if you guys want to make a task stand out, you're going to want to put urgent next to it or make it color red. I think it was. It was a while ago. Uh, so thank oh thank you Leslie for was that for the notification system that you had spec'd out Liz Leslie so everybody thank Leslie for the notification tool I think it's pretty cool and who was responsible for the coupon modal widget put a one in the chat box so we can give you a thank you as well. Mm -hmm. Might not be on the call. I'll find out who it is, and then I'll say thank you on Facebook. How about that? Um, that was Sam Jones. Everybody say thank you for to Sam Jones for the coupon modal widget. Give him a round of applause. Thank you in the Facebook group. Um, so let's take a look at the status of the voting. I don't need to refresh because it automatically refreshes. So we have a tie between app set five and app set 10 now. You guys can change your vote still. We're not going to actually make the final decision till the very end. In the event of a tie, we're not going to go to any one person for a tiebreaker. What we'll do is we'll, we'll segregate the, two, the top two and then let you guys vote between just the top two. That way we can get more votes on the two that are the most popular or three or four. Uh, app set five is just taking a big lead. App set 10 is still second. So thanks everybody for uh, taking your taking the time to, to do this for us so we can uh, make sure ever it's done fairly and that we have at least a final decision that most people will agree with. Um, Keith, did you see any other no, uh, features that were added? I know <laughs> Leslie, I'll put that link for the voting again. So in the chat box, you're gonna go to that link if you can't get to the chat box because you're on a mobile device, go to http colon four slash four slash t dash xt dot net forward slash lowercase b lowercase x, the number one and uppercase letter u. And that'll take you right to the page. On a mobile device, it's gonna look small, but you are able to pinch it bigger to see what those uh, app icon sets look like. And then you can make your final decision. So are we going to leave this because people that are going to listen to the rebroadcast because we're international and some people are sleeping right now for about 24 to 48 hours before we tally the total votes? Um, actually, the end of the call is going to be when the decision is going to be made. Okay. So just like we've been doing it, um, I know mo a lot of people on this call are already international anyway. Um, they like to spend their nights with us. They must have boring TV over there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you guys don't have? Uh, Bering Sea Gold over there? Or any of those gold shows that everybody's watching nowadays? <laughs> All right. So, um, Keith, I don't have anything else to show that is new on my end. Um, I know you had some things to say, things to show. I mean, kind of the same old, same old. I'm open to some q and I guess, basically, at this point. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have some stuff, but it's not ready until next week. Stuff we talked about, but we're going to talk about it next week, right? Ed? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading all the questions because you said you were going to do, go into the question. Well, the, <laughs> I'm seeing the stuff that we were talking about, we're going to hold off till next week, correct? Correct. Yeah, so so I don't have anything until next week because we have to still work out some things on what we want to talk about. Um, but we're open to some Q&A. Uh, you know, I, just to let you guys know, I mean, the my uh, my Wi-Fi clients have embraced Coupon, and so now Coupon is part of the automated triggers with the Wi-Fi marketing system. Uh, there are <clears throat> new routers for the Wi-Fi system, by the way, uh, that are uh, more bulletproof with a bigger range. So if you have routers and want to replace them, let us know. We can replace them with the new, more robust routers with a greater range, uh, which I've done. I'm replacing all of mine. I should have them by tomorrow or the next day to replace all of my uh, customers. And um, 
uh, that's about it. Just it's 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 a nice segue and it integrates great with our B, with our coupon system. So I'll leave it to Leslie. She doesn't want coupon stamp anymore. She wants this page remade for resellers. <laughs> Am I right, Leslie? <laughs> could you do more with this page than you could with coupon stamp? <laughs> May, I'll, I'll figure something out, but I, it's a pretty, it's a nice little voting, uh, voting tool. I think I can put it to work pretty easily. That would yeah, be cool. Cause then you know what, because what I could do with this page, if you could add this to our system is I can meet, make each one of those a beer so that people can vote on their favorite beer at a brewery. Cause breweries are always trying to find out which beer, cause they kind of have to go on how much, when they sell out and when the tap, when the keg taps out and so on and so forth, but they they kind of like it's like a great survey system, and I could have a picture and an image and the name of each beer, and they could just go to this page and select it, and then they could know the favorites. I like it. So can you do that for us? Uh, yeah, we could definitely make it work. I mean, I've already done a lot of the hard work involving coding. I think the the prog programmer should be able to to plug it in pretty quickly. The only issue I would see is the actual, um, we're not going to make the images for you. So you well, guys. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll put in our own images. Like we'll put in our logo for like, maybe I want to do vote on your favorite brewery and I'll put in the brewery's image or the, the image for each different brew they make. Cause most of the breweries out here have a, have an image because they sell uh, each type of brew in a can or bottle form. And so they have an image for each type. So, yeah, I mean, if we could do that, that would be that. This is a great little tool that you just uh, created for for fun. Yeah, good question for you, Keith, with the CCP. Um, I noticed that I logged into the marketing center that I all the marketing materials were gone for International Bank Card. Um, did you find out from Chuck where that went? I, was there stuff there before? Because I talked to him and he's like, we don't really have a whole lot. I yeah. remember seeing it. I remember seeing a lot of stuff in there. Uh, I'll have to bring that up because I talked to him just before this, and he was like, we don't really have marketing info because this is all word of mouth, people you know, you know, one-to-one. -one. There's the brochure I made. I told him I'd send him that for him to look at, but uh, I'll reach out to him again and see what happened to what was there. Okay. Um, I got to stop scrolling this. Otherwise, it's going to take a long time for this whole video to rip. Um, any movement on the screen, it just adds like five minutes to the ripping. Uh, uh, How about text Ken, reader? Uh, let me get to this one first. Ken asked, what is the range of the new router? Uh, I think they said that it's 100 extra feet. So where the old one was 300 foot, it's 400 feet radius. Thank you. Yeah, people saying that they could use this page for gamification. I, I mean, yeah. Totally. I mean, it was a cool little game for you guys to play, right? And Absolutely. also, you guys noticed when I put it on Facebook, it was shareable. It had all the images on it, too. Wasn't that cool? Yeah. I know Leslie would appreciate that. <laughs> uh, BJ says, come on, peeps. Let's go with AppSet 7. It's the only one with uh, icons facing inward. So let's take a look at that. This is the uh, plea that BJ is making for everybody. So if you want to change your vote to App Set 7, he said, let's go with App Set 7. It's the only one with the icons facing inward. I still like App Set 9, but whatever. Mr. Illuminati. All right. <laughs> I just like it's just, you know, it's geometry. It's symmetrical. It, it's clean. Well, if you guys get a chance on your on your device, um, if you guys want to actually see the bigger version of this, just right click it, copy image address, and then place it into your URL bar, and you can see what it would look in a bigger view. So that, if that would help your decision, then uh, do it that I way. Mean, it's kind of like that's almost the Google image, but Google is a circle and we're a square. If you look at it. I mean, that's pretty close to what Google does as a circle, app set nine. Man, there's a lot of votes on here. <laughs> I'm really surprised. So your pleading is working. I just seen it go up one, I think. 
Uh, da, da, da. <laughs> Scott Scott Becker says App Set Seven looks too much like ISIS. <laughs> 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 that's that's, that's not good. The ISIS community app. <laughs> you, app set nine. You're going to get BJ all mad at us now because we're just <laughs> ripping on number seven now. I mean, <laughs> the Masons would love app set nine. Look at the symmetry of using a square and a compass to create that thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can I let you talk for a little bit? I got someone knocking on my door. Talk? What am I going to talk about? Uh, um, well, let me ask her some questions, I guess. I guess, uh, let me see. I'll let Ed get back uh, to that. Bob's, Bob has a question. Um, are Masons devil worshipers? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I don't, I don't think they are, but... Um, uh, and, and John can attest this because John is an eyewitness of this. But I once did a uh, – I was actually working for Lincoln at the time. Abraham? What? Abraham? Oh, okay. Yes, Abraham. <laughs> and, and I had to do a presentation uh, comparing a Lincoln against a Cadillac. And I was I – was, I was, I, and I had to take the devil's uh, – be the devil's advocate, and I had to take the, the Cadillac against the Lincoln. And I was working for Lincoln, and I had the executives of Lincoln and Ford in front of me. And and, and I demolished Lincoln because I was like, you know what? I'm going to go all out on this. They want me to be devil's advocate? You got it. I'm going all in on this. And I brought out all this Mason imagery in the Cadillac because the Cadillac has like perfectly straight symmetrical lines that you could only get with a compass and a square because their whole thing is they're based on science and, and aerospace. And Lincoln is all based on biomimicry, which is all these soft curves like nature and all this stuff. And I completely nailed it. And, and I kept throwing out these this Mason terminology and everything. And I had one, I think John will remember this. I mean, I destroyed it so good that I had like the head Ford guy come up to me and be like, you make me want to buy a Cadillac, a Cadillac over the Lincoln, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he kept that sort of quiet to his colleagues, though. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, so yeah, it's just a segue that, you know, I have no idea about Masons. I was just having fun because they're all about Mason work, which is trowels and squares and compasses. And that's what that reminds me of, just, you know, solid imagery. And it's literally, if I look at it now, if we change the colors to the Google colors, it's the Google circle, but a square. Are you are any of you watching the uh, Curse of Oak Island, that show? It's on, I think it's on Discovery. I have watched a few episodes of that. Pretty good show. Um, yeah, I mean, all right, so the downside is that, that show, of course, is if they did actually hit this gigantic gold thing, you would know about it way before the show aired. So you know they haven't hit it yet, right? <laughs> exactly. the, show never, the show would have never aired. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The show would be over. <laughs> all right, Ken asked. Uh, the new router allows for geofencing. Geofencing is a great concept. But with the changes that Google has made, can we firm up that concept to sell as part of the coupon program? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we have a little bit more leeway with apps to do geofencing. Um, it hasn't changed much. I know on the Apple side, I think you're not allowed to ping as much as you were able to. When I say ping, uh, that's essentially polling the phone to find out where they're at. Um, I think that has changed just a little bit. Maybe you can't pull as much, but I think Android pretty much hasn't changed. Um, can Keith discuss, Dennis says, can Keith, can Keith discuss how the Mother Provision app prints out the orders? Uh, <clears throat> so that's, uh, that was a concept to sell that I haven't sold yet. But there's several options that if you go into any one of your apps and you go to the food ordering, you can set it up uh, 
uh, three different ways to receive the orders. One, you, you want to show it? Um, I, I'm not logged into anything, so give me a second, and I'll log yeah. in, and you can give me give me the screen. So hold on a second. Yeah, we'll also make it interactive because people are gonna say Keith didn't show it; he just told us. You know what? You're you're right. So hold on a second. <laughs> I get a, hold on. Let me let me figure this out, and I'll get to an app, and I'll show you. So hold on. EJ says, sorry, I was late. Did you talk about coupon modal widgets? Yes, we did. Totally that the, did. That was at the very beginning, probably the first five minutes. So the replay will be up probably in about an hour. You'll be able to go back and reference that. Um, hold on a second. How did I? Ah, hold on. <laughs> Laura right. says, uh, the Curse of Oak Island is a great show except for the narrator he drives me nuts yeah i keep on expecting that narrator to say, narrator to say talk about ancient aliens because <laughs> it's the same guy <laughs> yeah, how do i okay hold on a second um what am i doing wrong here hold on nope that's not it shoot how do i okay how do i log in i'm sorry hold on I do everything from the motherboard, and so I don't know how to do it from the main, from the, from a, hold on, give me one second and I'll be there. Sure. Take your time. I'm going to look for some more questions here. Uh, Michael says, app set five looks most like a star. You're correct. Um, yeah, that's like the only one that looks like a star. And that's got 17 votes. Right behind it is app set 10 with 16. So you guys can change your vote still. If you guys are unhappy about this one getting ahead or this one getting ahead, you guys can uh, you guys can push these up by changing your vote. All right, guys, here we go. All right, I'm going to send it your way, Keith. Okay. Coming at you. All right, so... This is adding. So I don't think I have, let's see, fan wall web content. New. Okay, I don't have it on this app, but let me show you on this app what you could do. When you go to food order, um, where am I? I'm oh, sorry, food ordering, right? So go to food ordering. Let's just call this food. So the, the four ways that one can receive an order is this way. Um, one is you can give them the login to this app on the Skipper app. And when they log in, they will get an automatic push notification on a tablet or any mobile device on the Skipper app that an order has come in. Right. Um, the other way is emails they'll get it via email that an order has come in and it has all of these uh preset tags in there for the order and the other way are uh, the extras which is you can use a thermal printer and you can use google cloud print google cloud print is pretty innovative for everybody because anyone can hook into that and hook into their ticket printing system at any restaurant that they have. Uh, the cloud print requires, as you look at the setup guide, a, a, a particular printer that you have to get, blah, 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 blah. But if you hook into that, if you have that printer, then you can hook in. So now all of the, when an order comes in, it'll print out automatically thermally. Uh, if you use the Google uh, cloud print, you can basically connect, if you look here, to any printer. Uh, that you want when you set up the account. And then I just, you know, manage my print orders. I allow and I got to hook into my whatever uh, printer I have that's online or offline. So there's two ways to print your orders immediately as they come in. Uh, the second, the next way is that they come in as emails and you can have a set tablet or POS system or whatever that just has the emails popping up. And then, of course, the Skipper app, uh, when you give them the login information, like I would give the login for this to the customer, and they would use the login information. 
in the Skipper app. Uh, well, the, the, anyways, the password's not here, but you guys get the idea. Then that's how they would get it as a push notification. So, so there's four ways to get all of your orders done through the app, regardless of how it's working. So it's it's fairly bulletproof, and they can and they can do multiple. They can have it set up for the printer, uh, the Google Cloud, or the thermal printer. They can have it set up also so that the email comes and the push. They can get it in three to four ways uh, instantaneously so that they don't miss any orders coming in. Uh, hopefully that answers that question. Ink in a printer? Could it be? <laughs> um, Laura, Laura could appreciate that. <laughs> possibly. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Laura says, what about the customer of the restaurant? How do they receive notice that it is ready? Ready? Um, so are you talking about someone that's not sitting down to order, but like coming in for takeout? Either or. Well, if they're sitting down, the server one is going to bring them the food when it's ready. So they don't need to like be notified. The notification is the food being set in front of their face. Um, if it's takeout, when you set up the app, let me go back to this. Uh, if you guys look at, let's see, uh, shoot, I got, I should have gone to the other app, but basically you set up that it takes uh, for takeout, and I set this up, I think, with the 508 Tavern, but I'm not logged into that one, that it takes, uh, see, I don't have anything set up here because I'm just doing this from scratch, uh, 30 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever to have the order ready. You, you can set that up. And so then they know, okay, it's going to be ready in 20 to 30 minutes. And so they know when to show up. Um. I wonder if that system when they is, order, like, let me, I'll just go to the app. Does, it, does that system have a webhook ability? Um, because if you could, you can literally ping it to beacon snap to send a text. I think that's been our biggest crux with this system is creating the webhook capability. Um, I would work with them to try to, to be able to implement webhooks wherever data is passed through the system. Um, I think it would be a huge value because, um, like Laura says, she says she's doing this with food trucks or thinking about doing it with food trucks, which would be huge because there's a lot of times where those food trucks get pretty busy and you're left waiting for your order for like five, ten minutes. So, so that they could, you mean so that they could send the customer a text? Exactly. I guess so. I mean, but but – but I, I understand that. However, let's be realistic for a minute. At a food truck, you got one person cooking their butt off to try to keep up with the orders, one person taking the orders. You're expecting the person taking the orders and handing out orders to stop, get on a computer, and send out a text message that someone's order is ready. That's not going to happen. That's just unrealistic. I'm sorry. It's a great idea, but that's not going to happen. The people just need to be there ready to go, okay, your order's ready, and pick it up. Literally, because the person would have to stop. Is it, as, as fast and innovative as our system could be, they would have to log in to the Beacon Snap system, for example, right? And they'd have to go like, here's for Bear Roots, right? Bear Roots would have to be like, okay, we just got an order. Let's go to SMS campaigns, right? They're going to load SMS campaigns. They're going to go, you know, oh, let's pick our brewery, right? Let's go to our subscribers. Oh, so-and-so ordered something. Okay, Ryan Simpson ordered. Okay, let's go to his order, and let's let him know, hey, by the way, hey, your, your order is – oh, wait, hold on. I got to take an order real quick. Someone's here at the window. Oh, and I got to hand out this order because this order is – you understand what I'm saying? And then you got the sous chef. See. The sous chef gets all flustered, and then the real chef says, yeah, "It's raw, you idiot! It's raw." There, there's no time for someone to literally go in and type out a text message to someone to say their order's ready, take an order, and deliver an order at the window at a food truck. It's just, it's just not going to happen. So it's a great idea, and yeah, I'm sure we could figure that out. But I mean, you guys can see the reality of it. The reality of it is, is when you order something. At a food truck, which which I'm very accustomed to, because here, and I'm not trying to be mean or or facetious, 
But like I said, I got 40 breweries within a 10 mile radius of me. And all of them have food trucks every single night because they can't serve food. They just do their tasting room. And there's, a, I mean, this is a great food truck business. You literally just order your food and you sit there and wait. Now, some of them have those buzzers, um, but that's hardware and we're not involved in hardware. And the hardware is they hand out a piece of hardware, right? That's like number 105 and they go, okay, ticket number 105. And they just hit a button that makes, you know, that buzzer 105 buzz. That's easier than trying to type a message. So, I mean, and we don't deal in hardware. We would have to invest in the hardware system for those pagers. That's what it is. It's a pager system. A lot of the food trucks have pager systems. I don't see them going, okay, I'm going to give up the pager system for this because the pager system is far too smooth and efficient than trying to get in here and call you. Let me say, oh, yeah, your, your order is ready and send. It's just not going to happen. Now, I did have a cool application for a food truck once, though, using um, Apple Wallet and geofencing because this is a guy that used to do it, uh, actually still does, a whole bunch of fairs, right? And he would have customers in the area. I mean, he would do this every year in various places. And he would have customers in the area. And if they had wallet, he would ping out a geofence saying, hey, you know, I'm in the area. I'm doing this like, you know, tomorrow. I'm doing this today. That was a completely different application. But that, that worked pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's advertising your whereabouts. But right. And, and that's fantastic. And, and we can use beacons for that, too. That's where, where that's a great that's a great way to efficiently use iBeacon in a place because when the, when the food truck is there, the iBeacon can broadcast out via the mobile wallet. Hey, food trucks here today, food trucks here today. Make sure you order. Here's the link. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yep. And, so, and so that's cool. But as for, as far as notifying people that their orders are ready, really the, the one thing that I see working that the food trucks are using at least here are the, is the paging system. And that's hardware system that I, I can't even imagine where we would start to uh, deal with that. Because we're already, we the only si piece of work that we have that has hardware involved is our Wi-Fi system. And most of you don't want to use it because it's hardware involved. So for us to invest in creating a paging hardware system for you to go to resell for this, I, don't, I just don't see the benefit in it. Ed, do you oh, have any input? You guys are watching my screen this is our wutex sms gateway i don't you're on my screen i'm it's my screen isn't it should be my screen is it your screen now yeah okay so if you guys can see my screen this is our wutex sms gateway uh inside of this is our little mobile uh version here if you come up here there's a seating notifier that is uh included with the mobile version so if they had a mobile version uh, on their device, let's say it could be the uh, cashier or it could be the cook. Well, you can send um, when these are completed. You can send SMS when their thing is ready right away and everything's pre-configured and ready to go. All how, you do they get, how do they get the number in the first place? Add at new. The, what, at the order? Yeah. So they'll just, they'll just ask for a phone number here, plug in okay. the phone number. And then when they're ready, they check off or tap it with their finger. Let's put it in mobile boat so you guys can see what it looks like. So it'll look like this on a mobile device. You tap what you want, and then you send the SMS. And what does the SMS say? Just you're ready, or what? It's pre. It's pre. Uh, it's pre-configured. Pre-configured. Correct. Well, that's cool. Now that that would work. That's a great solution. Uh, but that requires Wootex. That's different from our other stuff. I mean, we're all connected, but yeah, that's a Wootex system. That's awesome. So that would definitely help you guys. Uh, BJ asked, is Wootex now ready for the new SMS platform, Textria? Yes, uh, it's already ready on our end here. So you see Textria numbers. So I don't know if you guys, if it's available for update yet, this is where you put your uh, system ID and auth token, and then you can buy your numbers here. And assignment goes just like how you do normal Twilio numbers. So look out for that update coming this week. I'm looking to get you guys in a Textria, hopefully, uh, by the next call because we have uh, another company that's working on the voice side of Textria. Originally, Textria was just intended to be a cheaper SMS alternative, but 
we decided to go full out and just in, try to include voice too. So our programmers are feverishly working on finishing the voice API. So you guys won't have to like, if you guys are porting in numbers um, into Textria from Twilio, um, you won't have to leave half of the voice there and the other half for texting on the Textria side. We're trying to make it a, a full service solution for you guys. <clears throat> okay. Um, There's an editable CCP uh, brochure that I put in the group, I believe. Yeah, and, I in fact, it, no, it's, it's part of this right now. I think it's part of the handouts in this right now. There's a, a flyer that's a handout on this webinar right now if you look at handouts. There's a PDF CCP flyer. So I'll try to show you guys. I'll, I'll make it stand out for you. So if you guys can see that in your little panel, there's your CCP flyer. Um, did you get this out of the way, Ski? Um, Scott says, what is the final cost per text for Texture? You were saying it was much less. Yes, um, it is considerably less. And you also have the option to buy it down to almost near cost. Uh, need Jamaican phone number and Textria? Yes, we have Jamaican phones, a lot of them. Um, got that one, BJ. Tre uh, Tressa says, can you show us what coupons are available to copy and engage Snap and apps in App or Snap? So what I'll show you on my side first and there's more going up today because we actually are having a launch of Engage Snap here in about a day. So all 50 of them will be in by tomorrow. Uh, so you go to coupons, manage coupons here. Give it a second here. And if you want to create a new coupon, just click on create a new coupon, select from templates, and then all the templates will be listed here. If you want to see what it looks like before you pull the trigger on it, you can go view coupon, put it in mobile mode so you can test it. And then when you're ready to grab it, just click use template and then edit to suit. Uh, Michael says, what is the short code? I can't declare that yet. We're still making the final particulars on that too. A CCP flyer must be my printer, but this does not does not print properly on my printer. That is a Keith problem, not an Ed problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will. Um, I think. Well, I made it on. Um, I think I used Pages, so I'll try to put it up in the Facebook group as a Word doc. I guess. And see if that works for everybody and a uh, and pages. I'll just put it up there in the group. Uh, Digital Dave says, "What will happen to six nine six nine six? Um, we're going to be adding a nine to the end of it, so it's going to be six nine six nine six nine. No, just kidding. It's not going anywhere. Um, let's take a look at the voting here real quick. So, upset five. You. Epset 5 is taking a uh, resounding lead, a really huge lead here by three. So if you guys want to change your vote, you can do that. Um, a lot of people are putting some pretty cool comments saying they like Epset 10 because it looks like a boomerang. Another person said you can make some pretty cool animations with Epset 10. And then everybody says you can make some cool animations with Epset 5. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different um, – Things that are open up on our side. I'm not changing my vote. I just accidentally clicked that. So at least you guys know where I stand. <clears throat> uh, Keith, uh, are you still locked up over here? <laughs> no, I'm good. What do you need? Are you still on Appset 9? No, I, I, I don't <laughs> care. Whatever you guys want. Whatever you guys want. Uh, Tressa, she says, plea for 10 because you won't miss it. It is eye candy. I like it too. I think I think it'll really stand out in the app store. And then what I really like, and I'm not tooting my own horn because I'm voting for it. 
but uh, you'll see it on the notifications. It's really going to stand out. And there, you will be able to know who that is from just based on the, the boldness of it. Bob says this voting system needs a verification question before locking in the answer. Actually, the the, lo the verification system is the actual IP address of your device. So there is not people making multiple votes with the same device. <laughs> <laughs> Unless that's some kind of inside joke with you, Keith. No, I just... <laughs> <laughs> I sent you a message. I, if you want to look at it on your own, it's just that's what I think of when I look at 10. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> Let me share my screen again. All right. So let's get it close. We might be able to have a, a little uh, vote off here. All right, what does Keith see, everybody? Tell me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I like I like nine. I'm just saying I like nine. Okay, one person says they see butts. <laughs> <laughs> that's they, what I see. That's exactly what I see. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's what I see. <laughs> Bob Well says he sees spread legs, so that might want to change your vote. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it looks like to me. What Bob yeah, just said, I'm like, wait, that doesn't this look right to me. About people's personalities. Man, only a dirty mind, only I mean, a dirty mind, I mean, only a dirty I mind would see that. Because that's what I see, but that's what I see. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an icon. Come on. <laughs> but I mean, that's where Appset Ten works because, as she said, they're all facing in. Looks nice on Appset Seven, maybe. And at any time. We could always remove, <laughs> make these, uh, I don't know, we could change them. We may add a dot or something. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, just, it looks like feet instead of hands. You got to make the things look like hands, not feet. It is hands holding, not foot holding. Right, but it looks like feet. <laughs> it looks like hands. If they, had, if they had fingers, it wouldn't look like feet. Yeah, we, we can make some revisions. <laughs> okay. I can't say that, Bob. Um, <laughs> oh, you guys are just nuts. All right, so get your votes in because we got like eight minutes left, and then we're going to make our final decision on the uh, winner of the app. App set five because somebody named Keith made a nasty comment on it. Is I didn't make a nasty comment. <laughs> I just agreed with what Bob and someone else said. That's I, all. Again, I made fun of you because of the Illuminati, and then you had to make fun of my icon. That's I got okay. it. <laughs> I'm just saying nine is safe and symmetrical. <laughs> uh, you guys, everybody's just going to go over to Epset 10 just to prove you wrong. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I, I don't, I, I, I'd love to be wrong. I would be more than happy to be wrong. Yeah, he says they're bent over kissing their asses. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> uh, Digital Dave. Yeah, not me. I didn't say that. <laughs> I just <laughs> said it didn't look very appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, let me tell you. Oh, my God. It must be late. <laughs> you guys need to get out more. <laughs> All right, so... Well, you guys are voting now. Take any more questions. Uh, let's see here. I think we got most of them. I think we got all the questions. If anybody, if I missed any of your questions, please re-put it in the chat box. BJ says he's good with any logo as long as it's not mistakenly identified as part of LGBTQ elemental P due to the colors. I don't think it will be. Um, if anything, we can probably remove or change some colors. Um, <laughs> God, man. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna close this. You guys are just, you guys are just too weird, man. <laughs> you guys are, uh, you guys are bad influence. 
Bad influence, guys. Well, hey, we'll come we'll come up with something that's amicable and acceptable for everybody. Um, we, we, I mean, we ultimately we're, we're very pleased that all of you want to participate and help us. Oh, Keith, I got to. I sorry to interrupt you. Um, yeah. I got to send this to you because we got to answer part two of Tressa's question about what's available in the apps to copy. So if you want to go through all the ones that you can copy. Um, any app that we've created, we'll copy for you. Um, can you go over some of them? Do you mind uh, just putting it, um, showing it on the screen for a couple minutes? Um, yeah, hold on a second. Let me yeah. find it. Give, oh, me, give, me one, give me one second to get there. I got to see what I have and what I don't have. Um, cause I, I build everything under admin. And so a lot of it is like, it's all over the map. So give me one second here. And a lot of stuff I've built it. Um, yeah, see, that's not even showing up. How did I, how, where did I build all these? Well, I can also say app set five looks like the, the sign of the beast. The upside down star, right? Am I right, Keith? Uh, I'm sorry. Where upset five? Where's that? Looks like an upside down uh, star pentagram. Upset five? Yeah. Actually, I thought it looked like a star of David. Ah. The First star, one. the star of Keith. Yes, there. Yeah. Um. Uh. As far as, you know, maybe that's where this, okay, this screen right here that you created, Ed? Yes. Maybe you could send me this so that I could create it for each app that has been made that I've made. And then people could say, oh, I like that app, that app, that app. Because, I mean, there's, I, I just built, and I think I told everyone about this. Which Did you send me a chat box? Excuse me? Did you send me a link or something? I haven't sent you anything. Oh, I thought you sent me a link. No, I was just talking about the, your the voting page. Oh, you want me to send you this page? I'm saying if I could take this voting page, uh -huh. I could make we could I could put an image of each app up there, and people could like somehow select an app they wanted. But what I was what I was saying, I think on the last webinar was one of the mo the the app that took me the longest to build ever was the Mother's Provisions app. And that's because I built a menu for them that was so extensive and so big that it just took forever to build. Um, but outside of that, I mean, the Mother's Provisions app, but you obviously have to put in your own menu. The Swami's app, the Bear Roots app, the 508 Tavern app, um, the, uh, the Swami's app, I think I said that one. Uh, Anyway, we'll, we'll get we'll get the images. We'll yeah, get the, there's a lot of, there's a lot of apps out there, and, and if something you want that's pre-built where you just have to change the information and the logo, all you have to do is create an app and say and write the name of that app, and then after it, write copy, and then we'll know to give you a copy of that app uh, if it's something that I've shown and presented to you. Uh, someone asked me just recently about a tire store app that I made which is R and R. So if you want the R and R app, I, you can, you can get the R and R app. That was, I think Randy Wood, um, which I can show you guys if you want, but I can find the link for it. Where I'm is trying it? to find the actual, um, there's a text file that you gave me that has the app codes for all of your apps. Yeah, that was a, yeah, but there's been more since then. That's the problem. Uh, that's what I people are asking about is there's been a, I built I've built a lot more apps since that but here's one I'll put in the chat box for everybody. This was for a tire store I made for someone you guys may know named Mercer that he sold and made a ton of money off of. Um, but that's a that's a cool app I built that's in your chat box now. Uh, there you go. I and, will share. And um, 
So, yeah, I mean, anything I've shown in the past, if you remember even slightly the name, I mean, pretty much the Swami's app is it was an app that had um, the ability that it had five separate loyalty programs and a loyalty program for beer, a loyalty program for wine, a loyalty program for appetizers, a loyalty program for entrees and a loyalty program for cocktails. And they could uh, redeem one loyalty per day per each program. So that was a pretty cool app that that really like that one allows you to like start with a lot and just kind of like uh, disable some of the features to like sell it one way. And then if someone wants to add something, you can just click enable and it enables the other aspect of the loyalty and then just change their branding or how they want to do it. So, you know, it's just just pre-built and makes it very easy for everybody. So I think the Swami's app is great for restaurants has five loyalty programs built into it. Uh, Bear Roots had our gamification system built into it. 508 had uh, online and delivery ordering built into it. Mother's Provisions had online and delivery, or no, just online and takeout order delivering built into it with a, just a massive, massive freaking menu. Good Lord, took me forever for that one because of that. Okay, um, okay, you dirty birds. <laughs> let's get this finished up. Um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna give you guys. You see the countdown here. When this thing hits 8:03, voting is gonna be done. So if you guys want to change your vote, if you guys are sitting over here somewhere and you don't want to see this one make it, or you don't want to see this one make it because they're already way up in the lead, change your vote now. Uh, I'll give you guys another. 45 seconds here. When this hits 8.03 p.m. Eastern, the vote is done. Please don't give me a tie. <laughs> don't give me a tie. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your luck, buddy. I got to get you dirty birds off the phone. <laughs> ah, there you go. Someone changed their vote. 20 seconds, and we're going to call it. If you want to change your vote, Epset 5 is in the lead. These are the two most popular ones, Epset 5, Epset 10. Change your vote. You got five seconds, four, three, two, one, and zero. The winner is Epset 5. Epset 5 is the winner. That's the one we're going with. So congratulations and thanks, everybody, for participating. It's a good one. It's, it's, a, it's a good one. That's, I like that one. It's simple. It's clean. It kind of looks like a snowflake. <laughs> yeah, it's clean. <laughs> it looks like a snowflake, really. No, I like it too. Um, if anything, uh, Appset Six reminds me of uh, World Cup soccer. It also reminds me of like Halloween of like ghosts. It'd be a good Halloween one, wouldn't it? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, when the app starts. I'm still uh, you, this is, very this upset. About, no one like, wanted to follow my lead and go with Appset Nine, but whatever. Yep, that is the yep. final winner. Um, if anything, what I would do, I could probably make these a little bit more bolder because there's, there's a lot of white space. Uh, make it stand out. But it does. you're right, it does look like a star when you put it in a smaller configuration like that. See that? So thanks, everybody, for voting for Appset 5 as the winner. Um, Laura says, I voted for nine once. <laughs> Until... Well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, guys, um, we're about five minutes after. We don't want to lose the call. I want to thank everybody for hopping on. I'll get this uh, ripped up and put in the back office and on the Facebook group here in about half hour. Uh, we'll see you on the next call. I'm sure we'll have something nice for you guys, maybe something new. You never know. So with that said, thanks, Keith. Thanks, John. Thanks, Elena, for hopping on the call. I'm at Hopkins. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Peace out. Bye, everybody.